Talk she. Recorded live. What's good, everybody? Uh, welcome to another week of our uh, podcast, Move It Boxing Show, you know, where we bring you the latest and greatest in boxing news, unfiltered, um, raw, and uncut, unbiased. You know how we do. Keep it underground, away from the main, mainstream BS. Um, I'm joined by two of my no, normal uh, panelists or co-panelists uh, on the show today uh, from the Truth and Facts About Boxing. Uh, we got Bo and uh, Bernard on today. Uh, what's good with your fellas? What's happening, man? Was really good. Twine was really good. Another day, man. Uh, just another day to talk boxing. Had some interesting stuff over the weekend. Uh, not yeah. necessarily too many topics, but you know, still something to go in on. Um, y'all ready to get it in? Yes, yes sir. Man, before we get started, I yeah, say, man, gotta give a shout out to those there. that can't be in. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Hope my hope our boy Two K. Hope, hope, hope the eggs didn't float away so he can so he won't be on suicide watch, man. <laughs> yeah, big up to two K. Um, hopefully everything all right. He uh down there in Texas, you know they going through their storms and whatnot, the hurricane and all that. So hopefully he's safe in Dallas. We gonna keep our thoughts with him and his family right now. Um, also uh shout out to Big Cool. He can't join us today from Colossal Boxing Talk, but you know we uh we gonna hold it down for for Big Drill as well. <laughs> Big room, wow. Big smoke. Big smoke. All right, y'all ready to get it in? Yep. Yes, sir. All right, let's start off with our uh, reviews of um, last weekend's fights, uh, pretty much the main ones. Um, I guess we could start off with, um, did you guys get a chance to check out Miguel Cotto versus uh, Yoshihiro Kamagai? Man, yeah. I watched that fight. I watched that fight. Let's start off with that, too. Thank you very much for starting off with that. All right. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, Miguel Cotto won his uh, sixth world title, I believe, over the weekend. Um, the 154-pound WBO belt. Uh, we can go in a whole lot of shit behind that, but um, you know, congratulations to him um, winning that after two years off from the ring. You know, going through his uh, little dispute with Rock Nation, and now he uh, he's with Golden Boy as far as uh, doing this promotional stuff. Um, Man, let me start off with Bo. What did you see in this fight? Uh, what did you think of it, period, man? Just everything surrounded the whole, the belt, all that. Did. You know, there's some mysterious shit behind this one. So let me get your thoughts on it, man. Well, of course, him went walking away with that belt with some bullshit. So let's start with that first. This should not have been for a title motherfucking fight. I think yeah, all of us can agree on that. Um, what I want to focus on is this. Now, a lot of times we hear at the movement, we encounter those who might know boxing, but then they have a casual motherfucking moment. And although I'm cool with them, I still got to put these niggas on blast, okay? I was, on a, uh, I was arguing with a couple of my boys from Old Ring IQ when I was telling them, I said, man, look here, man, Cotto going to watch this motherfucker. And they like, well, he ain't been fighting for two years, and he's older. And I, I said, dog, Tamagaji's biggest motherfucking victory is Jose Cito Soto Garas. That's it. Soto Caras. You telling me that Alfonso Gomez and Robert de Gos Guerrero could beat this? Uh, and, and remember now, this motherfucker is 34 years old also himself in Kamagashi. So y'all really thinking that this motherfucker stands a chance against Miguel Cotto. And I don't know what them niggas were smoking, but they was all on me. And I'm saying, dude, Miguel Cotto with five years off still watches this fucking dude. And what did we see last night? I think you, if you look to give Tomagai a round, it was a mercy motherfucking round. It wasn't some shit that you decided to do that was serious. <laughs> it was just I, what I, I said disagree, was. I disagree with that, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, well, we'll let you. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll put it like this. It was a wash, period. I think, uh, was he tough? Yeah, he was tough. Cotto hit that nigga with everything, including the kitchen sink. But I, there was no way in hell I, I, I even remotely thought that uh, Kama guy was going to beat Miguel Cotto. And anybody that thought that had lost their fucking mind. I'm just being honest. I, I just, there was nothing about Kama guy that I saw that he, from, even from a skill standpoint, that was better than what we know we could get from Miguel Cotto. So, uh, good fight for Miguel Cotto if he's going to retire. I know we got some people who, who, don't, 
who aren't the Miguel Cotto biggest supporters and shit. You know, I ain't going to say no name. I'm my homeboy, Van Rogers. But uh, this was a big victory. I mean, it was a good victory for him. He won another title. He made history. I still think it was some bullshit that he fought. I'm a guy for that title. He should, normally, a vacant title, you have number one versus number two. But they didn't do it that way. So, you know, big ups to Miguel Cotto. He wants to fight. I hear he wants to fight the winner, Canelo Alvarez and Gennady Golovkin. I, you know, we'll see what happens, man. All right. Uh, Bernard seemed to have a, a different sentiment. Uh, before that, I just want to say this is the Yoshihiro Kama guy that drew with Ho- Ho- Jesus Toto Karras. So, yes, this is the same one. Uh, let me pass it over to Bernard. Um, what was your take on that? Um, you said you had a disagreement as far as uh, the scoring. Oh, I, I uh, actually, he actually won one round in that bout, which was the 11th round. He, he was a little more okay. in that round. I'll give him that round. It wasn't a mercy round. Let, let me say this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be truthful. I last week I picked Kama guy to win the fight. So I'm like, oh shit, this is Kodo. He ain't been on two years. Kama guy is a guy that likes to come in. He's rugged. He's rough. He comes in there and looks to fight. And Kodo would be in up an age. It may back. I thought it was gonna backfire. I wasn't thinking it was gonna be a knockout. I thought it probably would be a close decision, but. It'll, I'm not going to say close to a decision, but Kama guy was going to win. Well, clearly, I agree with my partner. Cotto washed his ass, but it was in the weirdest fashion to me because I'm more going to get on Kama guy. I don't think that motherfucker threw a jab in that fight. I don't I, I don't know if he did. If He he probably did, but when I look at what he kept mostly doing is he kept going in there, high guard, Going on mm-hmm. the inside of Cotto, trying to push it, basically bully him, bully him, be physical, get him on the ropes, start off working on the body, and then try to land him uppercut and such. But the problem was, just as he, he would do that, Cotto would it, it start timing him and start picking him off. Boom, boom, boom. And if you, I noticed Cotto got, for some reason, he would drop his left arm, get in the shoulder roll, uh, Try to like get a shoulder roll, try to roll with the punches. It was not working for him. His head was going left, right, left, right, up, left, right, down, up, right. It was like, damn, motherfucker, get the fuck out of that shit. You know, it pissed me off. But hey, Cotto did. Yeah, it was a bullshit fight. I'm gonna agree with my partner. It was. It should have been for no belt. That that belt should really be for Liam Smith. And Liam Williams, I think in October, that WBO built. Mm. But hey, that's the politics of boxing when you got money behind and you the WBO. That hey, it's the WBO. I'm not really surprised. I thought it would have gone to a top weight fighter though. But with that being said, Kama guy did get one round in. That was the eleventh round. I don't know if he even got two. I can't complain with the uh, the scorecard from the judges. They all, it was a clear unanimous decision for Miguel Cotto. My thing is this. Uh, who are you going to fight next? And then, you know what? It's time for you to go, man. You had the, you had a career. Mm-hmm. I salute you on your career. I much, much respect, too, for what you have done over these years. Um, I don't see the point. If you're just trying to get easy wins to, for your record, I don't think – there's no need for that, Miguel. You did what you you did what you supposed to do. And you you won a belt uh, Saturday night. You won it. Just retire. Just retire. That's a, that's my thing. You won a belt. You can retire as a champion. You don't need to wait till the end of the year to December to possibly fight one more time. You won a belt and retire off that. But if you want to retire and defend that belt, go out. Hey, go out fighting in in, in the blaze of glory. And that's what I would hope we do against a contender that's going to give you some kind of competition. Common guy didn't give you that. So, man. You know, I, I, I want to say something. You said this is his sixth, this is his sixth belt he won, right? Yes. Okay. How ironic. <laughs> and maybe it's me, but do you all think this was an ego thing? Because Serrano was the first po- fighter yeah. ever, Puerto Rican <laughs> ever, to win five times. <laughs> so do you all yeah. think that, I mean, does does this feel like an ego thing to y'all? Yeah, definitely I, I do. Well, one, well, one up, yeah, definitely, definitely, could okay. see that. But here, here's the problem with that, though, right? If I'm correct, 
and I checked on her Instagram, I think she's moving up to 140. Um, so, I actually she was moving, moving. I know she was moving away to something. Um, I thought it was actually down, but I mean, I mean, she already moved it. down, got the belt in that division, so she's moving up. So okay. I want to um, check on that real quick. But like I said, uh, yeah, I can see that, Bo. That is a very good question. I, I think it was an ego thing. Like, hey, I gotta one up you because it's, yeah. it's, if you look at, let's be honest, his oh, his ego has been since he beat. Sergio Martinez, he hasn't really taken on anybody other than Canelo. That's a loss he took. But other than yeah, that, he true. fought Devin, Re- Devin Rodriguez and Daniel Gill. Wade drained both of them, fought them, beat them by knockout. Of course, his ego was hurt. So he's trying to do stuff that, for whatever reason, he, he, wants to, he wants to go out on top. On his terms, basically, yeah. He wants on his to call terms. All the so, and everything, you know, even with the Canelo fight, you know, a lot of it had to be based on what he wanted. You know, he's trying to pull, I won't say the diva stuff. That's what's been thrown out about Cotto for, for the last couple of years. But, I mean, he's pretty much been wanting everything to be on his side, which, you know, being a veteran, and he has, definitely has uh, proven himself. He does deserve some leeway in some of this stuff, but. You know, like you said, the, his two of his last three matches haven't been against the – well, actually, now three of his last opponents haven't been the most suitable, you know. So, but um, exactly. I definitely agree with you, uh, Bernard. One, if he, I, I don't think he should fight in December. You know, he won the title. Um, you know, if he's not going to defend it against one of the, uh, you know, one of the top contenders, at least by the WBO, like I think he should actually defend it against the winner of Beefy and, uh, you know, the other, Liam. That's what I actually think should happen um, if he's going to defend it, you know, because they're fighting for, I believe, the interim belt still. Um, I'm not sure how this whole shit with the WBO came about. That that whole thing is weird to me considering what happened with the, the other thing, and they already had the mat, uh, rematch set up. So, I mean, we'll keep our eye on it. But like I said, if he's going to defend it one more time, I think it needs to be, which I doubt it will be in a timely matter since, you know, both BC and uh, the other Liam are fighting in, what, October? I believe it's October. Yeah, so that would be too soon of a turnaround to even fight in December. And he's hoping to fight, Cotto's hoping to fight again his last fight in December of this year. So, I really don't know what to expect for that one. Um I guess we'll go into our um our next topics as far as uh, the other we'll talk about the we haven't we're not gonna talk about the main event of that card, but we'll talk about two of the other fights. Um first we'll start off with uh Tank Davis versus uh Francisco Fonseca, which ended pretty weird, uh, by knockout. And uh I'm not sure which round it was. I believe it was his fifth or sixth, if I'm not mistaken. Um but yeah, it was a questionable uh knockout um well i guess the punch that landed was questionable supposedly landed behind the head um first off let me get you guys this take on this fight man uh this was supposed to be a showcase fight for tank and you know he got stripped on skills lost his belt you know missed the weight by two pounds um there's some news that came out the day of the fight um with jim lamp or jim gray that uh, Tank was supposedly sick during the week. We don't know how accurate that is. I'm having a cold all week, so that, that may have be something to do with him not making weight. Um, let me get you guys' take on it. Uh, I'll start off with uh, Bernard on this one. Uh, I would think uh, if you had a cold during the week, I would think for what I do, what I learned to do is you try to sweat it out. You, if you get the gist of if anybody has been sick, you usually try. Basically, you try to sweat it out. That's what I usually do when I get sick. I, I prep myself. I go to the gym. I sit in that sauna. I'm trying to kill, put all that heat to kill that virus or whatever that's in my body. Uh, with that being said, it's kind of um. He lost it on the scale, right? Yeah. How much time did he have at least to try to get it off? An hour. You had an hour to, to get it off before you had to come back for a week to reach it. And he didn't even try to get it off for the hour? Nah. Uh-uh. Man, I don't – oh, my God. I don't want to – let me say this. I can't 
he's young. He said he'll not he won't make that mistake again. But here's the thing though. You miss weight when you fought uh who was the guy? Leon Walsh in in uh the UK. But you didn't miss it by that much. You knew you had a fight coming up in Vegas and then you missed it by two pounds. I don't know what you're doing, what he's doing. I don't know if he's getting, what's the word, complacent in his in his position. You understand, you're a champion. You're supposed to be professional at all times. Now, I can understand if you say, hey, I tried to get this weight off, but I couldn't get it. My body is not allowing me to take it off. Then I can respect that. But for you not to put, even put the effort even to take an hour to go sweat, it could have been water weight to sweat it off. Man, I think he's gotten complacent. You know, he he got he got the money, the under armor the bank. Yeah. He's getting less. He's getting less physical, and it's going to be. Uh, hopefully, this is a wake up call before something bigger happens. You know what I mean? When I mean bigger, meaning he gets in there and goes against a a Lomachenko or another top. Uh, what division he's in? Featherweight. Yeah, super featherweight. Super featherweight. Going there to get the top contender, and the top contender puts it on him and make him lose. You know what I'm saying? I, hey, it happens in boxing, but if you're not going to take yourself serious and take this, take this thing seriously, then you know what? Then, uh, shoot, you already have people calling him A.B., little A.B. Yeah, I thought that was kind of pushing it too far personally. I mean, Tank 22. Um, I'm going to let you finish up before we pass it on. No, 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 no. You, It's cool. You interjected on that part. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off on that part. But, no, it's cool. I, I mean, finish your point. Um, I definitely thought that was a little bit unwarranted. I mean, like, I really paid pay attention to Tank's career. Um, one of the things is you got to understand Tank's pretty much as he's fought at 135 plenty of times in his career. Like, he's – a big, bigger guy, you know, he was convinced by Floyd to go to 130, um, you know, so people have to realize he's fought at 135 um, previously, many times. Um, you look at his body type, like he's got a short, stocky, cold kind of body, like he's a, he's a powerhouse, you know, he ain't no small 130 to be, even though he's short, you know what I'm saying? Like he's built kind of, kind of like a powerhouse, Um so, I mean, I take those things into consideration when I look at him struggling to make weight um, two of his last three fights as well. And I don't even know if he struggled to make weight against Pedraza as well. So that could be three of his last his last three fights he struggled to make it. But, you know, in at least his last two, you know, he struggled to cut the weight. So, I mean, um, I'll go ahead and pass it on to Bo, man. Um, what do you think about his performance, uh, you know, the aftermath of this, Floyd, Floyd critiques, whatever, man. Uh let me get your thoughts. I didn't hear any employees' critiques, but as far as the aftermath goes, um, A, number one, I don't think we can call it, say, he's Adrian Broner because the difference between him and A.B. is he actually won his fight. All right? So I don't think we can say A.B. Broner. I do feel that the whole thing with the cold kind of bothers me because when you catch a cold, you lose weight when you catch a cold because you can't eat Thank things you. like that. And you, huh? No, I'm agreeing with you. Thank you. Yeah, when you catch a cold, you don't – I've never known to catch – I mean, you, you, you ever see a person that has pneumonia and they, they, they lose five pounds that week just from just from the pneumonia. So I don't, I, I can't go with the he caught a cold thing. Uh, what I think it was is he was down there in Vegas. He was around the entire festivities of what's going on. He's 22 years old. He has money in his pocket. You're down there in Vegas. Everything is jumping off. People are coming up to you. It's the it's the biggest event of a biggest stage he's ever been on, and he soaked it all in and just kind of lost track of. He probably did more soaking up the the festivities than he did training. Okay, come out and say that because it happens. You know when you try to bullshit and say shit like, "Oh, I caught a cold." Fuck out of here, motherfucker! I'm smart enough to know when you catch a cold, goddamn it, you lose weight. You don't catch you're no right. cold. You know you're right. You don't catch no fucking cold, and then. Okay, let's say you had a cold. Now, I get it. You're young. I get it. You're young. You're 21. 
But I didn't see no remnants of you being even exhausted or tired because the cold also saps your energy. So I didn't see you showing me no remnants of you being tired or sluggish during this fight. So miss me with that cold shit, you know. Um, he, he, you know, it, it, it was just a, it was a thing. It was a youthful thing that he just messed up and made a, you know, and, and he made a mistake. He was, he's young. He was down there. He soaked up all the, this even confirms me more as to why when Floyd wanted him down there, he didn't want to go. And I, I feel like, yeah, he shouldn't be down there. You should, you should be in B-more because you didn't have these kind of issues when you was up there in B-more. So, um, and then, too, I don't think people understand, and it's not Floyd's fault, but it's what comes with him. The surroundings with Floyd Mayweather is chaotic, and it's not Floyd's fault is that way. It's just he's Floyd. That's the thing. So everything, the surroundings with Floyd, the things that come for it's it's chaotic. It it really is. And if you're not able to handle that and deal with it, and you know, still be able to train and everything like that, it can kind of overtake you because being with Floyd, especially if you're 22 years old and you boo driving Bugattis and mad people walking up to you, stars know who you are. That shit can kind of you know overtake you a little bit. So. You know, hopefully this is just a one-time thing. I'm not going to say he's Agent Broner because I think something can be fixed, but this is this is the reason why I'm glad like, like Shakur Stevens didn't go with Floyd because these kind of things you don't need happening to, to you too early in your career. And because we know about Adrian Broner and his connection with Floyd, when, uh, when this happens to other fighters, that's the first thing we're going to say. And I don't want that to be a thing where, hey, man, Floyd can ruin fighters. I, I don't want that to be a thing. So... Hopefully, like I said, man, he, he says he's going to get his belt back. I think it, it is sad that he, he lost it on the scale, right? I hope he paid the guy who came down some, some, some money to make up for the disappointment of him coming in heavy like that. I hope he did. I, I, I seriously hope he did pay him. But, you know, let's see what happens, man. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I I'm not going to slam him. I'm not going to slam him. I'm just going to say, you know, hopefully he's mindful next time. Can I piggyback on what Bo said real quick? Uh, yeah, go ahead. About, uh, I agree with him on the, the whole thing. You, you do lose weight when you catch a call. The perfect example of of it being a Floyd is somebody taking in the festivities, and I hate to use this as an example. Is when, remember when Earl Spence in, um, following the undercard of Brona and Porter and that fight was in Las Vegas? The fact that Bro, excuse me, Mayweather was promoting that fight, the fact, again, like Bo said, it's Floyd. The festivities were big. Everybody was there. Broner was, even though Broner made weight, even as of making weight, even go back to the hotel room to rest, he was still at the gym hanging out with Floyd. Like, you got you to gotta be my, this is your career. I don't see Tank, and I'm only going to be straight for honest, going up to uh, 140 and 147 with his height, with his height and reach. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being honest. I can see him probably stopping at 135. If he does go to 140, it will be a shock. But you're going to have to take his – you got to take – you got to live, eat, sleep, boxing, fam. You got to mm-hmm. do what you need to do and stay on it. And stay focused. I mean, I don't. I disagree with one thing, but I don't know if this B-more is the spot he should have been, should be at either. Maybe he needs to go to uh, Colorado. Go somewhere where you seclude yourself before your fight. Get your mind right. Get your body right, and you'll be able to focus. Take yourself out of your. You can't be co- comfortable because you get too comfortable. If you try to get what I was just saying, when you like at home. Like, some fighters, like, we see, okay, yeah, if I train it, some of these fighters that train at home, it may not be good for them. They may need to go to Colorado. They may need to go to Florida to train, to get their mouth, to stay away from, to stay away from their family and friends until it's the time of the fight. That's what he should do. I don't think Vegas was a good, uh, even if he did go to Vegas, I don't think it was a good, good, uh, a good look. I understand fight week, you got to be in Vegas, whatever, for the press conference and stuff like that, but. You should be able to, again, have some kind of self control and know what to do in that in that time because you know, hey, Friday is weight. I got to be able to make weight. I got to be focused and I got to be ready to go for Saturday. And I'm a champion as well. I don't want to lose my belt 
on those scales. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it was definitely a lackluster performance. He he just didn't look into the fight period. He took he didn't take his opponent serious, which is funny because uh, you know Fonseca Fonseca was actually ordered to fight in the title eliminator against Billy Did prior to this. You know, be, before they came to an agreement. Um, like nobody else within the IBF wanted to fight fucking Tate, you know. Um, even with the the eliminator between uh, Billy Dib, that's going to happen now. It's with the number eleven rated opponent, you know, um, because of Tevin Farmers out or whatnot. So, I mean, I don't know if that's going to now become for the vacant title. Um, Billy Dib against uh, I forget who it is, who he's fighting next. So I believe. Um, Beyond for now or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but that's pretty much I'm expecting that's going to be for the vacant title now. Um, I'm not sure if the process Tank is going to have to go through to even get back in title contention. Post fight, he said he's cut, he wants to get his title back at 130 and remain there. So, um, you know, that was the positive I took from it. You know, he said he wanted to stay at the weight instead of, you know, what he went to on uh, Twitter, you know, the day before he was talking about, you know, I'm a growing you know, I'm growing and I can't do it. You know, pretty much the same shit we did here, say what A.B. did say that before as well. So that might be where that part of the backlash came from. But, um, you know, definitely I know Floyd got in his ass for it. Um, I kind of disagree with you guys about the whole the Vegas thing because you look at somebody like Badu Jack, he's out there getting it done. You know, he yeah, but Badu Jack's not 22 years up. old, though. Yeah, no, yeah, I could agree with that as well. That That's true. Um. That that is one of the things I think uh, Floyd knew how to handle it, you know, um, even beforehand, you know, because he was always around the pros with his uncle. Um, he he's always had that vantage point. Tank never has, so um, I think Floyd knew how to conduct himself as a professional, even though he was able to enjoy his successes early, you know, um, the way Tank is being 22 now. Um, he was better groomed for this shit than uh, than Tank was. So Tank is real raw. Um, as opposed on that side. But um, I look forward to seeing what's going to happen. It definitely makes the 130 division interesting now. Um, Tevin Farmer has some words for him after the fight. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what to say about Tevin. Like, I like Tevin, but I'm like, you need to step your shit up, you know, before you start talking about all this. You and Lomachenko are the top two 130 pounds, and the biggest name on your resume is fucking Ivan Redcatch. You know, um, I, I have a problem with that whole thing. I need to see him prove it against somebody first. I honestly think Tank could knock his ass out right now still. But, you know, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll go on to our next topic, um, which will be another fight from the undercard of the spectacle over the weekend. Um, Badu Jack won the WBA 175 regular title from Nathan Cleverly in sensational fashion in a knockout. Um Cleverly actually announced his retirement yesterday. Um, he took the soul out that boy. Um, starting off with Bo, what you think, man? Uh, did did Badu make himself uh, even though he won a regular title at 175? Is he he a guy at 175 amongst the wards and you know the Gavad Six Stevensons and all that? Is is he a guy? You know, with this win, uh, Bo. Let me get your thoughts. Okay, uh, do we want to say he's the guy? We want to hope he's the guy because let's keep something in perspective. It was Nathan Cleverly, okay? It was an impressive win as far as we have not seen anyone uh, do to Nathan Cleverly what we saw since, uh, since uh, uh, um, I'm going to say Kovalev. Like nobody's done to him what we've seen done to him since Kovalev. So that kind of speaks volume. I think at 175, Bandu Jack looked a hell of a lot stronger at 175 than we, he, he did at 168. So uh, we criticized Floyd for trying to make him go up to 168, but, but looking at the results, you got to just be like, okay, well, maybe that was the right move because he definitely looked as stronger he even started out kind of fast. Normally, he's a slow starter. He started out kind of fast. He seemed to take the punches better. He seemed to throw his punches better. Uh, his 
his body work is just amazing. I mean, the, the, he goes to the body like you owe him fucking money, like he mad at you. So his, 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 his body work is amazing. But, you know, like I said, I'm not going to put too much stock into it because it is Nathan Cleverly. I do want to say this, and I'm, I'm not taking no shots. I'm just speaking here, okay? So don't get upset. Let me finish. He calls out um, – he said he wanted to fight Ward. He also mentioned Adonis Donna Stevens. I personally would rather see him fight uh, – Bondu Jack, then Alayda Alvarez. I'm talking about Adonis Stevens. I think he gets more credit if he fights Bondu Jack, especially he's a former champion. He's a WBA regular champion. So if you want to get to Andre Ward and, and, and you want to get to Andre Ward, you fight him, you grab that WBA regular title. Andre Ward can't ignore you no motherfucking more. He's going to have to, you know what I'm saying? He's going to have to recognize you. So I think that's, I, 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 I actually think that that's something that could be made. Bondu Jack has. TMT behind him, so he has some kind of money behind him. So I wouldn't mind it, but uh, I like what he did. It's hard to say if he if he can be a player because you you still got you got Barreda that's there, you got uh, Gavazic that's Bivol. there, yeah, Bivol, and I think any of them would have beat Nathan Cleverly to be honest with you. You yeah. know, now with that, the question is, would they beat him that bad? Who knows? But I'm just saying, any of them would have beat him. It's just it was impressive because Bondu Jack really did look that good against Nathan Cleverly, and we haven't seen nobody beat Nathan Cleverly that bad. Like, Nathan Cleverly said, fucking out of time. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you think about it, Bondu Jack beat one motherfucker to the fact, to the point he ain't even came back, which I'm mad about that because I miss looking at his sister. And the next motherfucker (laughs) he beat, the next motherfucker he beat has said, fuck it, I'm done with the sport. So, who knows, man? Yeah, um, I definitely agree. Um, I'd like to see a Donna's versus Badu. Um, I just don't know that the WBC has uh, held up this mandatory shit long enough, so I don't know if they're going to push it back again. We'll see. I think for a fight of that magnitude, they probably can again mm-hmm. if they wanted to. Um, but then again, you know, we're going to bring we're going to be bringing up the lighter Alvarez step aside shit if that's what really occurs. So I, I don't I don't know. We'll see. It's possible. If they, if they, I wouldn't mind them paying a little Alvarez step aside for Bondu Jack. I'm being honest. Yeah, because I actually think he, he, he like beat, the, he beat the late Alvarez. Yeah. But he beat, I don't see late Alvarez beating Adonis, so he beat the late Alvarez. But I can see Bondu Jack giving him a hard time. Because one thing about it, listen, I, I, I talk shit about Adonis, but two things about the guy. A, number one, he stays in shape for 40 year old And number two, he has the second most deadliest fucking one punch and put you down in all of boxing. Only second to maybe to to maybe um, uh, 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 Deontay Wilder. So you know, yeah. Um, I actually think it's an interest, interesting fight personally. Um, just based off we're seeing. I mean, we've seen a new wrinkle in Adonis's game as far as him working the inside. So seeing how Badu Jack goes to the body. Adonis' power and, you know, seeing that he does have a little bit of an inside and, you know, a uh, game, you know, he's uh, sound on the inside at least. Maybe not as uh, potent as Jack, but, you know, with that power, shit, you know, we've seen uh, Badu Jack get knocked out before by Derrick Edwards. Adonis definitely has the power to put any man down in the division. So, I mean, I, it definitely makes for an interesting fight. Um, let me go ahead and pass it on to Bernard as far as uh, what he thought is – Thought of uh, Badu Jack's debut at 175. He he uh, clearly did what we thought he wasn't going to do, which was he just thought we said last week he was on uh, the object. Badu Jack was not to start off slow and don't get yourself doing that high guard and let it cleverly tee off on you. The fact that he uh, did it, he he got him out there in the fifth round. It was a good thing. The referee called it. Uh, I don't know how some of y'all feel about the call. How y'all feel about the call? Was it too early of a call? Was it? Or was it just cleverly was hurt a little bit and maybe could have fought it off? I mean, he was throwing back, you know, in space. Yeah, he was so throwing I back. I say he was still there. Well, you know but, what? You know, I, at first, I thought it was too early until the next morning when he retired. I said, okay, it couldn't, it couldn't, have, been, it couldn't have been too early. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so, I felt like maybe well, it wasn't too well, early until the fucking though. retired. But here's the thing, though. It, 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 if you look at the knockout, the bottle mm-hmm. Jack doing the knockout, he didn't come, he and, uh, what's the word, 
He started off with the pity uh, punches before he started landing them bombs. That pretty much got the referee to, okay, okay, call it. You know what I'm saying? To get in between them. So, yeah, but the, the beat him in the – but you know what? Here's the thing, though. I was thinking about that retirement. I'm going to go get to the point. What if his pride is hurt that he lost? Not because he uh, lost the bottle jack, but he knows ain't no way in hell he will ever get a chance to fight for another belt. And if he does, he knows he doesn't have – he doesn't have the pedigree to be Andre Ward. Andre Ward, you now have a decision on cleverly. He'll nullify all that. If anything, he may knock him out with a body shot. Uh, him and Adonis, if this is a gun battle, like you said, Adonis got that one uh, punch knockout power that can knock out cleverly. So that wouldn't be a good move. Uh, now that Jack beat him, Jack knew what to do. So it was no point. So who can he really fight? I mean, you got the yeah, other, other guys. Other, other 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 guys he doesn't stand a chance after the young guns coming up. You know, I, I don't think he, he beats any of those guys either, like Bo was stating. So. No, he doesn't. I, I mean, I think 2K said a couple of weeks ago, the U- he's from the U.K., right? No. Nah, no, uh, he's from uh, – He's from well, Wales or Scotland or Wales or I think Wales. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, he's yeah. he's in that vicinity of the UK. So Scotland ain't that far from the UK. So clearly, their level of competition doesn't compare to the level of competition of the United States. Even though Bobby Jack is not an American fighter, he fight he fights in America. He fought American competition. He's been up against those the best. So far, the last fight he uh the last fight he fought, which was uh, the Gimp, one both were champions and individuals. Unification by the end of the draw. That clearly shows you his pedigree on how he knows how to come in. It could, like you said, it was a fight that was arguably anybody could have won, but it was a draw, which is a good thing. Was I respect that? But it shows you his pedigree, a level of stepping up in competition and taking on the best. So he has no problem. Nathan Curley, when he when he went up against Kovalev, he got knocked out. When he went against Fonfara, he went to a gun battle that he lost by decision. Now he just took a loss to Bottle Jack. He doesn't. He did, hey, I hate to say it. I I mean maybe I don't think it was probably he was hurt because of knockout. Maybe he's hurt for his spot. You know what I'm saying? He lost the belt, mm-hmm. the secondary belt. That's you the, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I could actually see that, and I could actually agree with that. Listening to it now. Like you said, he's probably looking like, man, I'm, there's no way I'm going to get a big fight now. So, you know, yeah, I could see that. All right. Um, so I guess we'll go on to our next topic, which hold is – uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on. We didn't talk about the knockout of Tank. Uh, not mean about the knockout of the controversy of it. Did you want to go into that? Why did we talk about when Tank was on? <laughs> no, but, um, but yeah, we, I we, guess, we didn't, we didn't uh, really get into it. Like, cause Yeah, I guess we could chop it up. Um. Man, that when you look at it again, I, I didn't think it was as a foul or as bad as he was Fonseca was trying to make like Tank Tank actually pulled the punch if you look at it. You know, as many times as they showed the replay. Um I was thinking initially like we may get a no contest ruling. Um but it definitely doesn't look like that. It definitely looks like Tank pulled the punch and it wasn't as bad as Fonseca was making it look. Um if you guys ever noticed Tank in that left hand, he's very good at placing it behind the ear. Um, we've seen him do it against Pedraza. We've seen him do it against, uh, what's that motherfucker, Liam something. All of them motherfuckers is named Liam, so I'm sorry if I don't know their last name. Um, uh, he has good placement with that, and for him to still be able to pull that punch, which was close to going behind the head, um, I think he even saw that. So, I mean, I'll get you guys to take on it. Was it as bad as when second made it, um, was it um, a legal? Uh, well, I guess you could say it was a legal blow, but is this something that should have the belt being ruled a no contest? Um, go ahead, Bo. Fonseca was pulling the Moses Flores, man. He was looking for a way out. He was looking for a way out. Yeah, he was on his way out, definitely. Tank had him hurt. Yeah. He was looking for a way out. Tank had, because there was an initial punch that got him hurt. And I just really felt like he was pulling the Moses Flores. He was looking for a way out. So, um, 
I'm not like too mad about it, but at the same time, you know, I think people got to understand. You got people that want to call him dirty, and he's not dirty by no means, by no stretch of the means, is he dirty? He's not dirty. Yeah, right. um, I, I he think, actually got uh, booed at the, you know, by the crowd for that, but they didn't boo uh, the other guy's hammer fist, you know. And, and so <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> hey, we're not yeah. going to even talk yeah, about that. Yeah, right? I, yeah, that's, I don't that's, want that's, to. That's, I'm just, I was just throwing throw throw that comparison in the crowd. That's all. I, that's the only comparison I want to go with there, man. Right. <laughs> hey, you know but what? Saying, Here's man. the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. We've been looking at these knockouts of the year, and it's seen to me – Going to the body, as Andre Ward stated in the telecast, is a very underrated thing. It doesn't get, give a lot of people, um, boxers don't do, or it's very underrated. It doesn't get a lot of credit. So as soon as a fighter gets hit in the body and they peel over or they kill over or whatever, yeah, it leaves the back of their head open. And it it sucks for the fighter that is trying to get that fighter out of there because this fighter is basically, in a way, uh, looking for an out. So... Man, it, it it sucks because then you go you won't get the the words that these casual fans like to use. Oh, he's dirty. Uh, he was cheating. He was throwing behind uh, punches behind the head and all this and that shit. No, twice he pulled back. You know what I'm saying? I trust twice assessment. I trust Bo assessment. If two K is the cool on the show, I'm pretty sure we trust their assessment as well. When they said, "Hey, he hit him with a body shot and he pulled back on that um that that punch he was about to land on, on the face." So. He ain't dirty, man. Stop, stop using words that, man. I, that's a whole nother. Do you think uh, we may see this turned into a no, a no contest either? You? No. Leave it. It's a W. Yeah, okay, I definitely agree. I think it should deserves to stand at a, it's w. a w. Just, it's a w. I definitely think. Yeah, I think definitely think Fonseca was mm-hmm. on his way out. Um, I think mean, I know it wasn't an impressive performance, but Tank was. Did what he was supposed to do as far as knocking a lesser opponent out, which he was on the verge of doing, despite what Fonseca did to to lighten the, the impact of the win. But um, no, we'll uh, go into our next topic from there, man. Um, we thought the WBA had ordered Santa Cruz versus Mares to be immediately next, um, but it's looking like they're both going to have a warm up fight prior to facing each other. Um, Mares did an interview recently where he stated um, they're both going to be looking like they're going to be on the card together on Fox. Him and uh, Leo Santa Cruz are going to be a double yeah, header, yeah. Double header, but yeah, they're they're not going to be facing each other. They're just going to be on the same card, and I guess it's a build up to you know their mm-hmm. rematch. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's a smart and, idea, personally. Yeah. Okay. Let me go ahead and uh, go with that, Bo. Um, let me get finish yeah. that off. Man. Okay, I, I I personally think it's a smart idea, and there is here's the reason why: is you have them fight now, and then you go into uh, this is October when they're gonna fight. So you have them fight now, and now you got something that you can look forward to going into next year. Okay, um, which you uh, uh, you still need to have some fights built and in the making for the following year of next year. So I'm not upset at them for this at all, period. I, I Like I said, it's a good idea. If you ask me, I think it's a really good idea because uh, if both of these guys have excellent performance, both of these guys uh, get big big knockouts, you know, now you're looking at something uh, uh, to, to look forward to as far as the excitement of this fight building. So I like the idea. Let a fight build because that's what Top Rank does. That's what Golden Boy does. You know, they let fights build. So if anybody got a problem with PBC, who have actually been giving you really good fights this year, we've been seeing top guys fight top guys, okay? So if anybody has a problem with it, you know, okay, it is what it is. You can't please everybody. But, you know, you shouldn't burn yourself out in one year, all right? Top rank is starting to come. See, the thing about PBC is they do good for, like, the first nine months, and they kind of cool off the remaining four months. And that's yeah. when Arams and Golden Boys start coming on is toward the end. Okay? And everybody so, starts saying they saved the year and shit like that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> but, yeah, but, and, boom, boom. When but we know that. that. But, but when you say that, why are they cooling off? And, I, and, and uh, let's, let's be honest. You got you, you Okay, next month, September, football started, right? 
Exactly. There so you go. Thank you. Thank you. I, by the end of September, in the beginning of October, the NBA starts. Also, so you, you got to think about the World Series as well in October. Uh, very World, series, World Series in October. So you are in, either they're going to be in heavy competition. Would you really want to put your best fights on during that time? During that, yeah. I just, how, how about that? You, you may want to have – you may have one or two, you know what I'm saying, maybe three. But you can, you can you really want to build up during the uh, beginning of the year because hey, between the, you got the playoffs, uh, football, them games are gonna be like some on Saturday, some on Sunday. Then as it starts teetering out, then you got the Super Bowl. Okay, of course you ain't gonna end up on the Super Bowl. Leave that, leave that alone. Then exactly. you got the All Star Weekend. You got the Oscar and the Grammys and all that. Thing. Don't want to really have nothing around that time either. But if you do, because hey, you might have to. Okay, it's understandable. But then after that, it's going to still just be the NBA. Then you want to have the – once the NBA team is off in June, you want to have it. baseball. Yeah, pretty much, yeah, baseball yeah, exactly. comes in the so, spring. So they know what they're doing. And, and you can't – and, man, stop giving – um, what's the word? People just need to understand. It goes back to both. You taught me this, and I'll give you credit. There's two sides. There's the sport of boxing. There's the business of boxing. In order to, this is business. Hey. Put two guys on the undercard. I mean, two guys on the same card that in the same division got belt that fought each other previously, a couple of fights ago. Put them on the same card to build that next fight up, possibly in the next beginning of the first or second quarter of the year. It's a good move. It's called business. That's what a promoter. That's what uh, management got to do. Understand the business side of boxing, man. Yeah, um, I actually think this this uh, request by Santa Cruz was actually strategic as well. Um, being that Mares has switched camps to, to Robert Garcia, um, he looked very good against um, Jesus Cuellar, um in that win. Um, I think he wants to be able to do some more scouting. Basically, I don't think uh, he mm-hmm. feels the Cuellar fight was enough to scout him off of that one camp with Garcia. So I definitely think there's some strategy here with the Santa Cruz team as far as requesting this. Um, uh, Marez looked revitalized. You know, we haven't seen him look that good in years. Like, he looked lackluster even in the fights leading up to Cuellar, you know, um, to where I thought he was pretty much a shot fighter and done, you know. Um, and now he's looking like he could actually contend with the top guys at 126 again based off the Cuellar fight. Um, we'll see what happens in this one coming up in October, the doubleheader. Uh, we'll keep our eyes out on it, man. Um, I'm surprised I didn't have this one added to our topic list, but, you know, since we're talking about uh, stuff coming up, man, we had uh, our boy Ingram, you know, over from the U.K. Um, he did an in- interview with uh, Remains the Vern, you know, a couple days ago. Um, Stavern pretty much accepted step-aside money to allow – Deontay Wilder to face Luis Ortiz. Um, I think they're lining that up for, what, the fourth quarter, December sometime? Um, man, uh, let me get you guys' thoughts on this fight. Uh, Remains to Vern actually um, deciding to finally take the step aside instead of holding up the, the growth of the sport of boxing and uh, the the growth of Deontay's career, you know, um, you know, he would have heard so much shit if he would have faced Devern again. So let me go ahead and get you guys' thoughts. Um, I'll start off with Bernard. Uh, I I wouldn't give him shit. The only reason why I would, I felt that he should have, he should have once he Devern became the mandatory. I think I said this, and both both probably agree. With, he should have got his ass out of there, eliminate that problem immediately. That's why I think if you get a mandatory and, the, and you, you, you're, these organizations are pushing you to fight your mandatory, fight them, get them out of there. If he ain't got no business being in the ring with you, get that fight set up immediately, get him out of there. I wouldn't hold it against him if he would have fought him immediately. It's a fact well, that he so, took- I hate that I don't want to cut you up, but supposedly um, there were they were having problems getting networks to pick up the rematch, which is why mm-hmm. it can get made immediately. Wow. Um, yeah. So, By networks, um, you mean Showtime. Let's just, Showtime, let's just keep yeah. it real. Okay, yeah. Hold on, hold on, well, hold on. Let me say this real What about uh, Fox? Won- yeah, he could have been on Fox. You know, Deontay's been on Fox as well. So. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What about Fox or uh, CBS? 
Um, the first one was on Fox, I believe. The first one actually was on Fox, wasn't it? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I thought it was on NBC. Oh, well, yeah, I know well, it wasn't on it, Showtime. It wasn't on Showtime, but here's the thing, though. Had the fight in Alabama, throw it, yeah, throw it on Fox. They could have got a, I guess they were trying to help me get more money out the fight from from the network, and I could see them show, Showtime. But, yeah, because Showtime had help. You know why? Because Showtime held the first fight. And by what it was, it didn't do so well. You know what I mean? I don't know if it did well in the race or not, but I'll just look that up before I say that. I apologize about that. But Fox could have picked up that, that, that uh, second fight, put on there, and got out there. But it's, it's, it was just, if that was the case in network, man, you could have held that fight uh, still in no excuses, man. Get him out of there, man. I got dressed on that part, but uh, the super fact that there's a possible chance that he took, since he took the step aside money, I mean, it's, it's money. You, you're getting paid to step aside. So, I mean, here's my problem with this, right? And this is what's going to happen. The winner of Ortiz and Wilder, if Wilder wins, and now that he got to go back to fight Stavern because Stavern took step aside money, are we going to have a problem with it again? That's the question I need to propose because, yo, well, I mean, if he had, I yeah, mean, that's, that's, actually, the first one was actually on Fox. I just checked that out now. So if they didn't want to pick it up again, that definitely means Showtime didn't want to pick the shit up either, apparently. Um, you know, Fox didn't want to get dibs on the rematch. Which obviously thought, they probably could have, um, being that you know uh, PBC is on FS1. But um, go ahead. No, actually it was on. Uh, I was actually looking at it right now. I was actually on Showtime because I remember. In fact, I was at Bo House when I watched that bout. And, I'm uh, looking at it now. It says Fox. What I'm seeing, but I'm seeing like Showtime. Bad, bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You're talking about the second fight. No, the first fight between Stavern and Wilder, I believe, his showing was on uh, Fox. I know he fought Chris Shelley Ariola on Fox as well, but I know that one definitely was on Fox. But no, it's on Showtime because I'm looking at YouTube right now. And it's Showtime, but yeah, it's Showtime. <laughs> it's Showtime. Fox could have picked that shit up, but hey, I digress on that part. We'll, I'll show. I'll send you the link on that. But uh, man, I'm tagging my partner in, bro. Both speak on it, man. There are so many things you could say here. Uh, first <laughs> off, um, okay, he took the step aside money, and it raises the question: Why didn't you do this earlier? And this could have avoided wow. a lot of problems. Yeah, I mean, because. You was hell bent, and you kept saying, "I'm not taking step aside. I'm not taking step aside. I'm not taking step aside. I'm not taking step aside." Okay, Don King even had it set up where you was going to get step aside. You you went out and got Jay Prince and uh, 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 Dublin for uh, for Andre Ward, and you know you you thought you was bringing in some muscle, and Al Heyman showed you, motherfucker, I got the big balls around this bitch. <laughs> you can go get who you want. I don't want you in the ring with my guy. You ain't getting in the ring with the motherfucker. Okay, and so, but I just think that if he was going to do it, uh, I wish he would have stuck to not taking the step aside, because when he took it, it just kind of, it, 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 I'm sorry, it just kind of, it's a bad look. It is. It's a bad look. For me, it's a bad look, because it was like, dog, you wasn't going to take it at first, and now you take it, so it's like, man, what happened? I could so, agree with that, Bo. I could actually agree with that. I can see what I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You should have stuck, like, you should stuck to your guns. Right, you should have stuck to your guns, man. Like, damn, dog. What happened? So, uh, he took it. Now, my only thing is, okay, you took the step aside. He's going to fight Dominic Brazelli. Now, here's my thing, and I'm going to say this right here, right now. Now that you are free. Now that you have no one to worry about, now that you have everything you have motherfucking asked for, Deontay Wilder, you need to either be fighting Luis Ortiz or 
a, 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 a unification match with a champion. If one of them two things don't happen, I'm going to be all in his ass because you told us that you, you wanted, you know what I'm saying, you, you, the Savannah was in the way. You said you wanted to fight Lewis Ortiz after you said you wouldn't fight him. Okay, a lot of cats went to bed for you about this. So I need to see you fighting either um, either Lewis Ortiz or a, 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 a unification fight. If he's not doing one of them two things, fuck him. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit about him being an American heavy champion. Fuck him. He's going to hear it from me. He He's going to hear my mouth. So... I just, I just hope he sticks to that word. player right now, knowing the shit's gonna happen already. If, if he, that? I, I, that's just Bo being a naysayer right now, like you know they no, had already. No, started. no, no, hold on, dog. That's not me being a naysayer. I'm being straight up and for real here. I'm, I am. I'm being straight up for real because here lately, cats have been saying one thing and doing something else. I just want to make sure that we got to hold everybody to the same standard. Okay. I mean, I, just I, like, I I definitely feel like Deontay. He's been putting it out there. You know, um, the talks. Have, I mean, the articles have been stating that they were already pushing for or Ortiz versus. Uh, and I and I understand Deontay. that. I just want to make sure it happens. Just to burn. I just, just want to make. Football. I just want to make sure it happens. It ain't me being a nation. I just want to make sure it happens because now yeah. I, I definitely, here, it definitely don't disappoint the people. Yeah. 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 That's I all I'm saying. Look at man. Really don't disappoint the people, man. But uh, as far as Devon taking that step aside money, man, uh, you know, he, in an interview with, with, uh, with um, Ingram, he, he said, um, you know, that it, it wasn't about the, the, the money. It wasn't about the, the, the networks not wanting to pick up the fight. He said it was something that was better for him. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to do a two into it, because whether I believe him, whether I don't believe him, <laughs> It is because I mean, what else could it have been? Because you didn't take it all this time. So what? What else could it have been that changed your mind? Because your and last fight was Derek Rossi. Your last fight was Derek Rossi. And it's the Vern So has what was it that changed your mind? Fighting. So he's been fighting yeah. once a year, basically the last couple of years. Um, yeah. So this is, this is you were so yeah. adamant. You was so because you even said then when they said what if they offer you to take steps out? He said I don't know because I don't care. I'm not taking it. So what the fuck happened? What happened? Did Don King was in your ear? I mean, what happened? So for you to tell me what well, it ain't got nothing to do with money, it ain't got nothing to do with them not getting a network. All right, you know, okay, man. I mean, me, I'm not buying it because something happened to change your mind. Because when you held bent on something, you held bent on something. You know, so yeah, yeah. But I, I, I'm just glad that we got this resolved, and I do agree with with, with my partner that Deontay Wilder should have been, De, Deontay Wilder should have been, um, been uh, got him, uh, uh, got him yeah, out of there, got, got him out of there, yeah. because I mean, and I think people, I, I, I mean, know. but I, I think that's another thing, like. He's getting the wrong. The blame is going to the wrong people as far as this WC mandatory shit. You know, this this is twice. You know, two or three times he's been in some some bullshit, and it's because of the fighters. Like he didn't ask Remains right. to burn, the, you know, to do all of this. He didn't ask Pavikin to to have his issues. You know, like no, he didn't. So. No, no, we, no, we didn't, Twan. We agree we with didn't, you. Twan. It is definitely uh, no, no, we didn't, Twan. I think you. it was inactivity on the WBC as well. Like, they could have ordered another mandatory if this motherfucker wasn't and going. And that's, you know what's not, now, now, I, I, I'm glad you said that because remember something here. Remember there was something floating around where the, 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 they kind of wanted the main to the fight, Lewis or the fight, the main was yeah. like, no. And the exactly. WBC should have pulled the trigger and said, no, dog, we're going to make you fight, Lewis. Because, and I said that, I said, listen, the main to when he said, no, I'm not fighting Lewis Ortiz, but like, he ducked him. I said, no, no, he's actually doing the right thing here because what he's doing is he, because if he says, I, right, if he entertains fighting Lewis Ortiz, he left the WBC off the hook. He ain't letting them off the hook. He's making them pull the fucking trigger. So I wasn't mad at him for that. But yeah. And they should have and they, and they pulled, they, they pulled the big card. Yeah, no, they, we're, yeah, the, we're the no. protection body. Exactly. You're going to fight him. I exactly. just can't see. See, that's, again, that's, that's a business side because everybody, Severa feels, hey, and let's be honest, he feels that, hey, I trained to go fight for Vekin in Russia. I trained. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker decided to pop for steroids again. Yep. So now WCC kicked, WBC kicked him out. So he feels, hey, I've trained for a fight to be a mandatory, and it's Severa mind. 
I should be the mandatory just by based default. Off, yeah, by, by default, default, default yeah, because right. of what Pavekin did. That's why he said his ground. The WBC could didn't pull the car with and say, "Hey, yo, no." Uh, we we call the shot, you know? right? We yeah. call the shot. Right. But uh, let's be honest though, because if I'm correct, didn't after Klitschko lose against Joshua, didn't uh, Klitschko get bumped? Up to like number two spot yeah, with Lewis Ortiz. Yeah, that's yeah. that's yeah. some bullshit in itself. And again, the WBC, these sanctions are like full of shit. I mean, uh, I guess just to finish off on this one, uh, as far as that card we're talking about with uh, Deontay Wilder and Ortiz, um, the Vern is supposed to be fighting Dominic Brazil on it. And I could kind of see the whole setup shit happen in Brazil and Deontay Wilder got issues. Um, that might be some some underground setup stuff in, in the event Deontay Wilder is victorious against Ortiz, which is a tough task. We all know. This. I've already called it. I already called that. <laughs> yeah, I called it's that definitely, one. definitely not an easy easy victory. Um, even at his age, Ortiz is a very intelligent heavyweight. All the, the, the all the skills. Oh, in the world. what did you say? Even at what? Even at his age, he still yes. <laughs> Nigga, what you trying to say? You know what the hell I'm saying. <laughs> Get your popcorn, people. You know what the hell oh, I'm saying. Oh, 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 oh. Father, 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 father Time is undefeated. That's what I'm saying. So, oh, I mean, nigga, hold on. Wait, 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 nigga. Hold on for a second, nigga. Oh, pause this show for a second. Nigga, what are you trying to say? Louis Ortiz is 36 years old. If you said 30, what? <laughs> What? 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 Thirty? What? What they got Luis Ortiz listed as? What they got Luis Ortiz listed as? What they have him listed as? Well, it's not. It doesn't matter what they have him listed as. It's what he really is. It doesn't matter what they got him listed as. He really is. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait a minute. Do you have any kind of confirmation of this man's age or something? I have confirmation that the Cuban record system is faulty than a motherfucker. <laughs> Yes, that, that that's the only validation I need. Oh, you just a hate man, man. Get your punk man, your motherfucking ass. You just hate you. <laughs> the only validation I need. That motherfucker about forty five years old. You know what I'm saying? Get the fuck. The nigga is listed at thirty six, thirty seven. Stop hating. <laughs> motherfucker, you Cuban Cuban fighters mature like fine wine. Motherfucker, cut that shit out. <laughs> They they mature like trees, motherfucker. Hundreds and hundreds. Of <laughs> <laughs> you on that um, bullshit? You on that bullshit today? Um, but definitely, I'm looking forward to that. I want. I, I can't wait to see it finalized. Um, I mean, Ortiz has been the boogeyman in the heavyweight division. Mm-hmm. We also had some other shit happen with the heavyweight division last week, as far as Colbert Pulev, uh declining his title shot against Anthony Joshua. So I mean, that leaves a lot of things up in the air as well. Will um, the IBF rule for another mandatory or eliminator? Um, I don't. I don't know how that's going to work out with the IBF since he declined his chance. I've never seen anything like that. Um, will the WBA pursue something since this happened, you know, as far as pushing Ortiz in there. Um, definitely some interesting things. Let me get you guys' thoughts on that as far as with the pull of Joshua situation and how it plays in the Luis Ortiz, um, possibly. Um, and the heavyweight division at that. Uh, go ahead, Bo. Who been pulled up on some bullshit? Plain and simple. You know, some motherfucking bullshit. He come up something he needs. He needs four months to get ready. When you not motherfucker, hold on. So basically, you telling me you was banking on Klitschko not retiring. Otherwise, wasn't you in the? I mean, aren't you in the gym? Aren't you getting ready? Yo, this is your moment. You've been talking and talking and talking. You fucking the WBA supposedly had a deal where they was gonna let they guy go, and that didn't happen. So, uh, 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 you know, you and your motherfucking uh, 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 title belt team holding ass was like, no, nah, we got next and all this shit. You do all this talking and talking, now it's go time and you ain't ready? Fuck him, pass him up. Shit, fuck him, pass him the fuck up because this is bullshit. You do all this shit, I, I don't understand it. And I really don't yeah. understand it. Maybe uh, can, people can say, bro, you being too harsh. No, I'm not being too harsh. This is boxing. Are you not in the gym? 
Are you not prepared? Are you really going to sit there and say, I mean, like, oh, I need four months to prepare. Joshua ain't fought in damn near the same amount of time as your ass. Basically, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you really telling me? What you're really telling me is, oh, man, I wasn't ready. That's what you, you either really telling me you wasn't ready or you really telling me that you bitch ass scared. It's one of the fucking two. So, man, you know, I, I don't know if there's ever been this thing where an organization has held a spot open by request because of some shit like that. Like this, yeah. So, <laughs> no, as far as I'm concerned, hey, I'm, I'm not ready. Hold my spot for me, please. Hold it, hold it. I need four months. Right. I need four months. Right, right, I need three to four. Three to four months? Like, what? Get the fuck out of here. You got your eight regular eight-week training camp. You get your big ass in there. <laughs> Take the right. right. <laughs> three to, I'm like, three to four months? This motherfucker, I'm like, what the? So, but you know what, though? What that told me when he said that was, this, this motherfucker's out of shape. That's really what it told Dude, me. This motherfucker's out of, out of shape. Out of shape and, uh, shoot, let let me tell you, this is, I want to pick up pick, piggyback on what Bo said. This is your moment in time. Yep. After that Crystal and Joshua fight, hey, yo, I get the mandatory, cool. I would have been in the gym, you know what I'm saying? You exactly. stay ready, stay ready so you won't have to get ready. What the? Then all of a sudden, Crystal retired. You should be ready, all right. I just need the eight week training camp. You know what I'm saying? Right. Then, you, wait, no, wait a minute. then you wait for your number to be called to say you're not ready. Like that, what? Huh? Like as soon as Cliff hey. announced his retirement, you didn't be like, Well listen, I need some time. No, you waited for when they called your number for you to say that, oh man, I'm not ready. What? I, I, I need three to four I need three to four you need a three to three, four month training camp. I ain't never heard. I, I can understand. Yeah, that's Maybe over three training months. right there. Yeah, you like, know what I'm saying? Like I can that. see three months. Maybe three months if you're trying to really, you know, because, you know, hey, this is a championship bout. You want to be at your top. I can understand that. But you added that extra month. You said, yeah. bro, you know I mean? hey, hold on. What are you doing? Four months is about 16 to 17 weeks. That is a very long training camp. And, yeah, that's what I'm definitely saying. Not, man. Definitely not something that a trainer would even advise. Because of peaking and you know getting your fighter timed right, you know making sure he's not peak, uh, over peaking or you know doing too much. Sixteen, seventeen weeks, nah, hell nah. Um, shit, yeah, definitely not a training camp. That's him shedding weight or whatever. You know, it, it had nothing to do with training. That's for sure. You know, like Bo said, um, they been out there all the right. same amount of time eating Swedish meatballs or whatever they eat over there in Bulgaria. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's definitely an interesting thing. What do you guys think is going to happen as far as Anthony Joshua's situation, man? Um, are they going to pull somebody else's number or not from the IBF for his mandatory? Uh, will we see the WBA step up and order something, even though we're hearing Deontay Wilder and Ortiz talks? Um, what do you guys see happen as far as Joshua voluntary? Like, just just put out you guys' thoughts. Um, go ahead, Bernard. Um, well, I can't really speak on the sanction advice. But I mean, you could, you have se- you have several several variables. You, the IBS would be like, oh, Pula, if you ain't ready, who's the next person in line? I mean, okay. And in the meantime, they could probably call the IBS title in there. That's how they do things. That's how they usually it, do things with the IBF. Yeah, they do right. stick to their process at least, you know. Right. So they'll probably call that hey, next person in line, and that. But here's the thing, though. I don't see Joshua fighting him by this year, so I, I can see him possibly doing a volunteer, um, um, voluntary defense in the UK, UK, or possibly in the US to get his name over, here, get his name over here, and get show, showcase his skills over here. I can see that. Uh, the, the the tricky one, the, the wild card is really the WBA, because WBA could be looking at that Wilder and Savon like, hmm, we ain't really got to deal with Lewis Ortiz. If Wilder knocks him out, that's cool. We can lower lower him in the rankings. You know what I'm saying? We, are, we want we want that, but we want that that money instead of letting the WBC. Right, um, right. That could be a variable. They had a wild card. That's the one you that can go either way. They could be like, hey, we sanctioning that body. That, uh, the sanction by the sanction that fight, it needs to have it by the end of the year. You need to have it. Da, 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 da. September, you know what? 
They got September when they get, they they come back to the table for that possible uh, Laura Andrade. Shoot, that might come up in the mix. You know what I'm saying? That Laura so, Andrade fight they have. That Laura Andrade fight. They don't they don't even mention this shit. Hey. That Laura hey, Andrade. Hey, fight. hey, hey. That, 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 that motherfucker ain't. That motherfucker ain't doing that. He, it's not yeah, Neither one of them want that shit, apparently. You know what I'm saying? I put down this on both of them motherfuckers. You know? <laughs> yeah, you waiting on the WBA to do it. Yeah, who waits? I mean, y'all, if you say you don't like each other, you'll fight. But uh, digress on that. But, yeah, it could. The WBA is the wild card. I'm going to just stick to that. That's the, they, they got, they can do whatever they want. They don't want this. They've been scoring Ortiz over a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if be like, you know what? We'll take that. We like you say the WBA want that money. Hey Ortiz, you got to fight uh Joshua. Or they could be like, man, we ain't got to deal with Ortiz and his his problems of him. So we've been screwing more this much. Let's see what happens with that W that fight against Deontay Wilder. See where that goes. Mm-hmm. I agree with it, that. It, it, it's, it, it's it's a wild card, man. And hey, hey, you say it's a bit. It's, Ortiz been screwed by W so many times. I mean, what do you do? You know what? Is, what? What do you do? You, you, you can't. He ain't waiting. If this, if, this, if Wilder does fight Ortiz, hopefully, hey, take that fight. If that fight is available now, Wilder needs Ortiz just like Ortiz needs Wilder. Yeah, I definitely think uh, Wilder needs to fight more than more than Joshua. You know, he, right. if he does. Well, he, yeah, he's already uh, went against the powerhouse, you know, so definitely Deontay needs this name on his resume more than Joshua right now. Um, yes, we can go ahead and go to our, our next topic, which I was hoping 2K's ass would be on the show for. Fucking egg, McMuffin, shake, drinking motherfucker. But um, <laughs> um, we have Richard Comey. He's actually switched uh, to a pretty good stable. Um, he's joined in the stable of Mike Rogier, a New York trainer of uh, – uh, Danny Jacobs um, out there in Brooklyn. Um, let me get you guys' thoughts as far as how this could attack, impact Comey's career stylistically. Um, you know, he's had some pretty good performances at 135, you know, a good one against Robert Easter Jr. champion. Then the Shafikov as well, he put up a good fight in that that one. And, you know, you can kind of still see he was a, he's still raw just based on, you know, in those fights, you know. Um, what do you guys think him going to the stable with Mike Rozier and being around somebody like the Danny Jacobs, you know, very skilled, you know, that's champ as well. Um, what do you guys think this would do for as far as his skill set or, you know, keeping him in contention at 135? Um, I'll go ahead and start with Bo. Uh, see, that depends because he, he already was in contention at 135. He just had a win. Um, he, 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 um, he lost to Robert Easton Jr. in a close fight. I think he 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 beat the uh, no 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 he lost to Shaka Yeah. So he and so he he's in title contention. He just got to win. Uh, I think what it does do for him is maybe it, it puts him behind a a better name with the bigger backing. So that might actually help and work for him. But he just got to win. That's all he has to do is win. Uh, the one do you thing think about this boxing, puts, do you think this puts him over the hump as far as getting those type of victories, though. You know, having that type of knowledge in his corner now, as opposed to, you know, might what might have been a limited corner, you know, prior to this. Well, you know what, we don't know, because I have to. It's hard to tell from one training camp. And remember how a fighter is. See, the, the reason why, I like, I like the fact that guys like Andre Ward don't switch trainers or Floyd Mayweather will stick with the trainers that's been with forever is you develop a certain way that you fight. And the way Virgil Hunter taught, taught Andre Ward, it don't work for everybody. Like, we interviewed Stephen Bredman, and he told me and Bernard that the way from Fada went into that fight with Stevens is not what the fuck they worked on. Okay? That means that some fighters, you can train in camp, you can teach them a whole lot of shit, but once they get in that ring, they're going to do their own thing. So it's going to be interesting to see. Does it have the potential to be? Yes, of course it does. And I hope it works out for him because this will definitely help him with a lot of things he does wrong. That keep him like because like I said before, he don't fight like a tall man. He needs to fight tall. That's the one thing he needs to learn how to do is fight tall. So and I, I hope it does work for him and it does have the potential to work out for him. Yeah. Um, Nard, anything you want to add on to this one? Um, do you think this puts him over the hump as far as getting some of those bigger victories? Like uh, you know, we mentioned 
he's been in, you know, the IBF title fight against Robert Easter, and he's been in another eliminator against uh, Shafikov. Um, so do you think him switching with Rozier, um, pretty, pretty re- recognized name in boxing, um, uh-huh. do you think this might actually put him over the hump in getting a key victory, like something like against the Shafikov or one of the other guys at 135? You know what? It'll probably it probably will. Uh, it's only only time will tell. Like I take you back on what both say. You get a new trainer, he can teach you different things. It's what you do in that ring that's gonna matter in the end of the day, end of that mm-hmm. fight. So if you're not doing what you're what you talk or the game plan is or the game plan, because sometimes you gotta go into the fight, you gotta have multiple game plans. So if he's not doing that, then that's on. That's gonna be on him. So it doesn't mean necessarily that's a mental block you got to get out. You got to get out of his head. So, yeah. and he has to retrain his mind. So he's got uh, possibly a new trainer could make him more polished. Like, I would like this. Like, I would give you an example. I would like to see Julius Ndongo with a better trainer. Yes. As, but it's, it's somebody I was – call me a good, good fighter. I'm just using it as an example, by the way. It possibly it would be a fighter that needs a, a trainer. Well, somebody that can help polish him. There's certain things that you – I saw with Kobe that Robert Easton fight, but, hey, let's give credit. Our Easton did what he's supposed to, but Easton also didn't do certain things like fight behind a jack, keep wanting to go into a slug fest for whatever reason. And then when he finally had that right hand, we saw what it, it could do. So, I would, again, I definitely like to see uh, basically pick up – with Kobe and uh, Rosier, pick up, pick up where – his last string left off, and every little nuances and everything that you can do that can build, uh, help build him as a better fighter, 135 pound division. Yeah, um, I definitely think the uh, the trainer, the whole switching trainer thing, doesn't work for everybody. There's been some guys that has been better for. You know, you look at a uh, somebody like Miguel Cotto. He's picked up different tools to add to his to his toolbox. You know what I'm saying? You know, going with Emmanuel Stewart. You know, and then going to Freddie Roach later on after that, you know, after his initial trainers from Pete from Puerto Rico. Um, so, I mean, it works for some. Um, I think it's not a bad thing. Um, sometimes you need to grow your skill set. You know, like in the case, I think somebody like A.B., he would benefit from switching trainers. Of course, that whole Cincinnati team, I think, in general. Um, but it works for some. Others, it's not meant for them. Uh with that said, um, I'm actually looking forward. Uh, Bo also pointed out a good thing. You know, it's not the first camp you worry about. It's the, you know, the third and fourth training camp you, you pay attention to, which is what I've mentioned when I say, uh, when I talk about uh, Jermell Charlo being with uh, Derek James now down in Dallas. You know, you got to pay attention to these upcoming camps. He's had two of them. So it's now it's like the third and the fourth where I'm like, okay, he's going to start putting some shit together, you know. Um, so definitely something to keep an eye on with uh, Comey. Um, right now he's ranked uh, underneath Luke Campbell by the IBF and no other organization to my knowledge right now. So, I mean, he's still in contention for the IBF at least. And Luke Campbell is actually uh, supposed to fight um, Jorge Linares, so that might yep. drop him down in those in those rankings. So, you know, he's right there, man. For this, it's there for the taking for him, pretty much. Um, I've seen something pretty interesting in the IBF rankings right now that I actually like. Um, Robert Easter's next mandatory maybe Ray Beltran. Fucking crazy. I like that. Ooh, ooh, that, that is a, that's a sweet ass fight. No trans. Yeah, because uh, he's been on the comeback. Yeah, 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 he's he's been taking ass lately. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no pause. You know what I'm saying? I ain't mean it that way. But he definitely been <laughs> you know kicking ass lately. Um, but yeah, we go ahead and go into our next segment, which is Bernard's specialty. Uh, hopefully, you got something good for us this week. Uh, the fuck are your boxing award? Uh, take it home. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, you know what? I'm 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 going to address something, and it's going to be subliminal, but it'll, y- y'all get laugh out of it. I'm gonna give the fuckery of boxing award to the to the to the fans that assume oh to the to the one particular fan of boxing who started to look real casual out there for saying that uh. 
certain. Uh, a certain <laughs> fighter from another combat sport is the face of boxing. Man, 2K was on. I, I, I'm going to say, I, I got to give credit with credit is due. I've been giving you credit, 2K, since you ain't been on the show. He called this man, uh, I don't want to say his name, but I'm going to say put like this. He called him Shell Sonny 2.0. You know who I'm talking about. The, the, yeah. the, guy, that, the, the guy that came <laughs> over on um, Sunday night and uh, got handled by the other guy we not mentioned it because he's retired again. So you can't figure that out. Go to Showtime on YouTube and you'll figure out the, the two fighters we're talking about. Now, ain't no way in hell another person from another another sport, another combat sport is the face of boxing. That's total bullshit. That's one award I'm giving out. Number two, to all the fans that were out there getting pissed off, about tearing TVs up, starting the fights at these fight parties, all because of this particular fight, it's not that serious. I would tell you to kill yourself, but I ain't going to tell you that. Go sit your happy self down and go drink some tea and relax. It's, 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 a, it's a fight. You, you fight that you thought, yeah, if you, you lost some money, you bet some money, hey, I for one put some money on the other guy. Because I thought there was gonna be some fuckery. That's just me. I could do that because I'm Mr. Fuckery, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm better for some fuckery. No fuckery happened, which I was kind of disappointed. Well, there was some fuckery, aka the hammer punches. But other than that, that was about it. I was that was about it. So that's number two. You know what I'm saying? I should give the award for number to myself as well for putting money on that fight. for looking for the fuckery. That's number three. I'm gonna give myself the award again for picking comma guy. For losing against Cotto. I picked Kamal got to win, actually, excuse me, to win. And he lost. He, he, I thought he was going to Well, he was physical. He did what he tried. But he did have Miguel Cotto breathing for the air with some body shots. I'll give him that. Because Cotto's mouth was totally open. But Kamal got, you got to learn some defense, fam. I should give you the award because I lost money on that fight, too. Uh, who do I, do I need to keep going? Damn. Uh... <laughs> I mean, the award is going out, so uh, I'll, you know what? I'm gonna give the award to uh, the, the, uh, Nathan Hot Dog Eater for uh, he asked some questions at the press conference of that uh, that that fight we chose not to mention. I don't know what questions he asked. I totally forgot, but I was giving him the award anyway because he only goes to the fights that he um wants to go to. Or what, 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 what do you say, bro? He 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 wants to go to, or they pay him to go to, or whatever. Uh, yeah, basically, he's never been to yeah. been as a fan. Yeah, so yeah. Um, number uh, what number? How many awards have I given out? I know I gave that was five right there. This would be number six. Whoever you number six is going to Oscar De La Hoya for for being pretty much a bitch on Twitter, taking this shit on Twitter, cussing out the other two guys. Yeah. We, we know Canelo and Triple G is happening, but fuck it. I'm going to sit here and say this. 2017, whether we like it or not, has been a year for boxing. Respect it. You probably decided to make the Canelo Triple G fight this year. You could have made that shit last year. But, hey, I understand you want to have the build up and everything. But, hey, I'm not complaining. Boxing is boxing. You're having a great year. So you get the war for taking your, being emotional and everything because, let's be honest, there are some guys on that undercard of that big fight that got some shine. Tank got some shine. Badu Jack got some shine. Uh, a few other – Sabidi got Sabidi, some shine. Yeah. Um, Ooh, your boy, I think Ugas, there was a, there was a young lady. Ugas definitely put out a big win. I was happy for him, man. Uh, that was a big stage for him. Uh, your that's, why I should have, that's why I should have put my money on, too. And I didn't. Uh yeah, he actually from, was a last minute replacement too. So I mean, for yeah, him to yeah. out that W against Delorme, who was already in camp training, uh, right. definitely a big win for him. Uh, yeah, give him. I definitely want to give him credit on that one. Uh, and there was a young lady from the UK who made her debut, and uh, she won. They tried to push her against Carissa Shields, and I know only reason I remember this because her opponent was named was Sydney LeBlanc, and That's I was twenty five before, right? 
Uh, I don't know. Was that who she was for prior uh, to her last match? Uh, I had to look that up. Because I put 25 on City of the Bar because I found out that if I put 25 on her, shit, I was going to get $500. I'm like, I can't pass it. Even if I lose the 25, I didn't care. So I'm not going to take it. Just in case that fucking shit happens. Hey, she fucking lost her lost 25. Hey, I don't care. It's $25. But, hey. Other than that, uh, man. Yeah, this was actually the same. Yeah, same shit as the Blanc Clarissa Shields before uh, last time. Yep. Yeah. Oh, shit, that's it. Give myself a fucking reward for that shit, too. <laughs> hey, I, hey, I'm saying so. But, I, hey, I got three. Shout out to you. Shout out to you. Hey, man, I got three so far, man. Damn. Oh, uh, shit. Uh, man, at this point, man, shit. I might just give myself just for making bad bets. Shit. Um, uh, but I was looking for some fun shit to happen this weekend, but it didn't. Damn. Other than that, uh, with that being said, Ain't nothing really going on in the media. You know what? You know what? That that's yeah. Get the fuck give get the fuck word to the to the mainstream media because you know you know what? I got there was no I, coverage I, I got, of anything I, 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 I really, last week. I really got to give this. I I I, I, I glad I caught this on. It's on YouTube. The fact that Stephen A. and Teddy Atlas were arguing on boxing was the funniest shit. But it was the most it was pure fuckery with how Stephen A. Was arguing with was it Teddy? yeah Teddy Allen and I think somebody else too about that fight we told not to talk about. And it was ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it was just ridiculous. Like yo, mainstream media is some dick riders as well. Uh, and you know what? I want someone to say this for everybody that thought an MMA fighter was going to go in there and do something to one of the best boxers in our in, the, in this past era, and I only say that past era because there's a new era going on right now, must be out your mind. The mainstream media really, hey, it was, again, the, the great white hope against a top black man. I mean, this also is one of the things I was disappointed about. You know, for everybody, all the mainstream that said this fight was a farce, and uh, we've chosen not to talk about it, obviously, because we thought it was as well. But for all the people as far as mainstream media that tried to get people not to, to, to buy the fight and, you know, just to, to take shine away from it, you know, whatever it was supposed to be in that submission, which it was, um, how come that ended up being the topic like the main staple of their websites all week. Like you go through their websites. Oh, it's called you, clickbait. Clickbait. Look at and how much fucking coverage is on them shits from the goddamn event. I mean, nothing but, you know, rarely anything else is featured. You know what I'm saying? Last week of anything else. That's why our show, we only had, what, fucking six real topics this week? Six or seven? You know, we usually got a lot more. The coverage, you know, as much as mainstream media tried to dog the event, they fucking covered the hell out of it more than, you know, they covered the hell out of it. You know, Cotto barely didn't get any kind of coverage for his shit against Kyle Guy, which he probably didn't deserve anyway because that was a bullshit title. So, I mean, I'm happy for the win, but, yeah, it's just weird, you know, they made that Renee Sayers against the event understandably, but to, to make that the focal point of your coverage, all we kind of goes against all the shit you said, too. So, you know, um, I so guess... How many, award, ended, how many awards is that to have for this week? I got three so far myself, maybe four. <laughs> that's about number eight right there, all together. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't know if you got any more or not. Uh, no, man, I, 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 I agree with you, because I feel like me... The mainstream media didn't like the fight. Then you got those guys. Like I got said, I went on the fans. And the, 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 the experts, all these experts come out the blue all of a sudden and say, hey, this person's going to do this. This person's going to do that. Uh, I can see what it was. We all knew what it was. But, I, again, me and me personally, it, it was a, it was a video. It was an exhibition. Oh, let me address this. For people, I, 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 got, I told my little sister. For people that get mad and say that fight should not count for his record and say it shouldn't count, I got a question I got to ask. Do your research. Who has seen a Chavez call somebody on their debut fight when he was, I want to say, 70 or 80 fights in? How dare you say that? 
Roy Jones Jr. just recently fought somebody that made their debut. That was a bare, yeah, bare knuckles brawler. Yeah. No, no, not that him before that. The one that he pick a fan, he'll pick a fan to fight and whatever. You know, it was like that, okay? So y'all sitting here, y'all, don't, do, y'all ain't doing your research. Y'all ain't doing your history. There's plenty of times where fighters have fought guys that have come up and they're already late in their career. But y'all want to make it pick it. Um, say, oh, it shouldn't count. Hey, I have to screenshot the shit. Go to boxrec.com, screenshot the record, and say, hey, look, no complaint. You you can't complain. You can't have it one way from one person and have it the other way. Well, and, you uh, know, the bad thing about that is this a loss would occur. They would have been the main ones talking about, you know, right. 49 or one type of shit. So, I mean, it's the double standard right there, and, it, you know, it is what it is. Um. I guess I could go into the you owe you know segment of the week. This was actually a pretty, pretty good one um, that I came across this week. You guys are going to get a fucking laugh out of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got to laugh. Look at it. <laughs> um, happened in Las Vegas in 1998. Um, it started what would be, this was the first in what happened to become a long career um, in Bernard Hopkins, you know, um, having a history of, Falling out of the ring. Um, in 1998, he uh, had a, a no contest in Las Vegas against Robert Allen, retaining his IBF middleweight title. Um, he sprained his ankle and was pushed out the ring by referee Mills Lane. Um, but we all know that was not the last time it would occur that would uh, be not falling out the ring. I don't know how the hell that happens, what, three or four times in his career. I, think, I know it's at least three. Chad Dawson was another one. And then, of course, uh, Oh boy, Joe Smith. Um, yeah. Who was the one that slammed him in the ring? Who was the one that slammed him in the ring? Oh, he got. I don't know, man. But that... <laughs> I just thought it was funny when I came across this. Like, man, this nigga actually been up knocked out the ring three times. <laughs> you know, like who could actually say that? You know, to go out of the ring one time, your career is a rarity. You know, but to have it happen three times, Bernard, you are fucking really the excellence of execution. The executioner for a reason. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, I guess we could go into the final blow now. Um, Bo was supposed to take it this week, but he's been kind of silent. I know he's over there fucking playing video games instead of focusing. I ain't doing shit. I'm ready, motherfucker. You ready for me, nigga? I'm ready. Right, yeah, I'm about to send you that invite, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see how you see how they do. You see how they do. <laughs> hey, hey, I just say, hey, twice, hey, twice. Hold me real with you. I just turned the game on <laughs> to see if Bo was online. <laughs> Cause Bo was already like, yo, he don't talk to me no more. No, nah, nigga, get on this game, nigga. I'm about to do you just like you did me a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? <laughs> Oh, man. So, the final blow. Um, This year in boxing has been the shot in the arm that we all need. Uh, I'm going to go off script a little bit here, but I want all you guys to follow me, all right? What we are seeing in our regular everyday lives and our environment, what we are seeing going on in the world, what we are seeing even happening, if you want to go the political uh, way, is there is a unified front to divide us in every aspect. And this year in boxing, we have sort of gotten away from that. And what I don't want to happen is for this thing to continue. So let's get away from this division that seems to be coming. Uh, that seems to be coming down. The one thing about boxing is, it is a global sport. It is all participants involved: man, woman, child, blue, white, brown, whatever color, whatever race, whatever religion you are. It is an all participated sport. And with that being said, we have seen some matches. We have seen some fuckeries from Amir Khan and his shit of drama. Uh, I call him Amir Kardashian and his shit of drama in more than fighting. Two, we've actually seen big-time good fights. we actually seen fighters, whether you like them or not. We've seen Andre Ward make appearances in the U.K. He's making commentary on HBO. He was on ESPN. Uh, 
Uh, like you said, we, we've seen guys come up and snatch titles coming up through the ranks in Earl Spence, and he's doing the nice little tour thing, okay? You got Sean Porter, who is always making himself available. You got uh, uh, Oscar Valdez, Diego De, you know, um, uh, Jojo Diaz. So boxing has been giving us what we've been asking for. Let's keep this going. We're going into 2018. We are hearing less and less talks about numbers and comparison to numbers and how it's looking like this shit, how it's looking bad. And I'm talking about from the guys who was pushing this agenda in the Steve Kims and the Dan Fat and, and the Dan Fat Rails who is pushing this fucking agenda. Okay. Boxing is in a place now where we can celebrate, where we can look at it and say, man, this was probably the best year and we can keep this going. But it's up to us. Shows like this, we live East Sleep Boxing, guys out there in the YTBC, the LDBC, it's up to it's up to us to make sure that that narrative do not come back or do not overtake our fucking sport. Because at the end of the day, it is our sport. It's not top ranks. It's not PBC. It's not fucking Golden Boy. It's our sport because an empty stadium makes no fucking money. That's real goddamn talk. So we have good fights coming on. Again, we got that super fly thing coming on with the, with the flyweights guys fighting. We have the Charlo. Uh, and Lubin, Hurd, and Trout, okay? Like you said, we might get Deontay Wilder Ortiz, Lomachenko and Rigo, Gennady Golovkin and Triple G. So this is our sport. And if we keep our necks and if we ignore the bullshit and we keep our foot on their ass, we'll get these fights like we've been getting this year. But it has to be a collective uh, group of us doing it, not being divided, saying, oh, I just want to root for PBC. We can't be like that. Because that's not how boxing works. That's not how it has never worked. The reason why the golden ages of the 80s and 90s and even the 70s was the way it was was because as a collective group, the fans wanted to see the fights that gave us the fights. Don King gave you the fights you wanted to see. And that's the only way we're going to get it is that we don't allow that division from these people with these agendas come in trying to divide us to pick a side. The side there is no side to pick in boxing. I've, I've, I've never heard the NFL say, hey, you got to pick a side. Either you with the AFC or the NFC. No, it's NFL. Same thing with the NBA. Oh, Yo, you with the East or with the West? No, it's the NBA. That's the product. That's the merchandise. It's fucking boxing. It ain't top rank. It ain't Golden Boy. It ain't PBC. It ain't this motherfucker trying to, to, to make a post to get a lot of clickbait likes and get people to like it because he's going to say some outrageous, outlandish shit. That's not that. That's, that's just bullshit. So let's recognize the bullshit, and it's always going to be there. It's in everything we do. But once we recognize this bullshit, let's let it just be bullshit and move on. That's what we need to do going into 2018. That's what we need to do going into with these last couple fights coming up. Let's keep this going, but it's up to us, all of us, collective as a group. If we are divided like we was in 2015 and in 2016, this is the shit we got, which is the reason why I want Floyd Mayweather to retire. I want Manny Pacquiao to retire. I want Miguel Cotto to retire because we have a young group crop of guys coming up. So they, and they are trying to fight each other. They're trying to make a name for themselves, and that's the reason why we, we, we've been able to come together in 2017 because of the young guys actually making moves and making shit happen. When, they, when that wasn't happening between 2015 and now, that's when we had that division. There's no more division now. Why? Because motherfuckers want to make noise. So let's keep this. I'm going to say it one more time. If we allow that shit to happen, shame on us. We saw it. Once we got past it, look at where we are. Look at what we're getting. We got fights on ESPN. We got fights on FS1. We got fights on Showtime. And it's just steady going and going. Clarissa Shields is making some noise. So women boxing is getting some in there. Heather E. Hardy was on Fox News. A uh, 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 fucking uh, Fox News uh, something. I forget what she was something. But she was on there, okay? So, I mean, you can't ask for something to be better than what we got this year. And if we go back to that, shame on us. But for me, I'm just going to say, let's be a united front. And if anybody don't want to be a part of it, fuck them. They don't, they don't want to be a part of the sport. All right. Big up to Bo on that uh, final blow. Um, as we say, um, we have a saying here, you know, amongst us. Boxing is the brand. You know, we've been saying that shit from Jump Street. You know, uh, we almost a year full. Well, we pretty much are a year fully in. 
Um, not on the 52 episodes, but we, we pretty much been doing this for a year, you know, and we stay consistent with it. So um, definitely good points by Bo um, that he take heed to. I'm um, heading to the latter part of uh, the, the sports quarter of um, 2017 and heading into, you know, what should be an amazing 2018 as well. You know, just as many good fights um, that can be made um, as long as, like, you know, Bo said, we don't let that bullshit come back to surface. Um, hold the, the, the top people accountable, you know what I'm saying? Um, with that said, I'm going to let everybody give out their, their handle, their social media handles before we get up out of here. Um, Bernard, where can they find you at? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I thought we forgot to talk about one other topic. And I know this is kind of off the... Uh, I, I saw it on the list, though. We didn't talk about the y- Yamanaka and Lewis Yamanaka, yeah. Um... I guess we could go in that. It's kind of uh, we we definitely uh my fuck up on that one. My bad, Bo. Um, That's what. Man. I guess we could go ahead and go in that one as well. Um, Shinsuke Yamanaka is pretty much contemplating retirement unless he could get a rematch with Lewis Neri. Um, mm-hmm. but that said, there is some other uh, news that came out a uh, positive PED test result for Neri in his post fight testing. Um, right now I'm thinking they're you know, his speculation is going to be similar to Francisco Vargas's issue as far as uh, eating tainted meat. You know, they they use steroids with the, you know, a lot of the cows and stuff out there to plump them up in uh, Mexico. Um, so they're thinking, you know, it actually was something they used, the substance he tested positive for is something they used to, to, to fatten cows down there. Um, Man, we got two things to talk about here. One, do you guys think Shinsuke Yamanaka retired? You know, he's 34 years old, held the belt for, what I believe, five years, 12 defenses. Um, do you guys think he needs to retire? Um, there's still He could still possibly win fights against, you know, guys like Burnett and Zizi. You know, I think he could actually beat those guys if it came down to it. But um, I'll go ahead and uh, let Bo go on in this one. And as well, what do you think is going to happen with the the Neri test result? Is it going to change the outcome of the fight, or what, what do you think will happen with that? I think it's going to be the same thing it was when it was for Vargas. Uh, I don't think it's going to change anything. Um, uh, the WBC has actually said that you know he might not even lose the belt. It's it, it's from what they're saying it is an epidemic of some kind, where the area he is is known for the meat being tainted. Uh, but it, it just leaves a bad taste in people in, in your mouth because um, you kind of wonder. Uh, and I know there's some people that feel like, well, if you know that the meat could probably be tainted, don't eat the meat. And to a certain degree, yeah, that's, 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 that's right. I agree with that. It's just so touchy because there are some situations where you don't, you like, you know, you pop positive, people take it that's very, very strong. But in this situation, there there is a, I'm going to say, paper trail where this incident that has been happening has been because of just that, tainted meat, okay, from down in that area because the drug he got popped for is what they use to beef up cattle. So that's safe enough to say that, hey, he could have possibly got that from there, especially when uh, a couple people have said that you farmers down there, they do put it in the cows, but they're supposed to wait 30 days before they take the cow to the slaughterhouse to extract the meat, and some of them don't wait because of supply and demand and things of that nature. So I'm just going to wait and see how it plays out. Uh, uh, but um, I just think they're going to treat this like the Vargas situation where they're going to say, hey, listen, we know that there is a problem down there with that meat. Uh, so, yeah, but it, it's but, but for people who hold that, that strong stance on drugs and say, well, he shouldn't eat the meat, I can also see their point too because if you know that there's a problem with it, don't eat the fucking meat. And I can understand that. So it's it's a tricky situation. I don't think this I don't think this is one of those situations where there isn't like a, a perfect answer to this. You know? Yeah. So um, what do you think, uh, Bernard? I'll, I'll let you take this one. Um, what do you think will happen as far as Yamanaka's concerned? Um, do you see a rematch? Do you think a rematch is needed, considering this fourth round knockout? Um, 
Also, you know, like I said, he could take on the other champions, I think, and get easier victories. So I don't know about the retirement angle, even though he's older, you know, and even at that weight class, it starts to take his toll on you, you know, those lower weight classes. Um, let me get your thoughts on that, Bernard. Uh, with that being said, um, the question you asked, if you, as Bo always says, if he wants to get back, let him get a, let him give a chance to get his get back back. I feel that he should. He, it was a knockout. Uh, I didn't get a chance to see the fight. I know both of you saw with the four rounds, it was good, a good fight. If Yamanaka could go in there with a different game plan and impose his will and his game plan on Aniri to get that build back, I think he should, if he feels that he could do it, and he wants to get back, let him get back. Uh, let him get it. Now, definitely agree. I don't. I don't. It's, to me, I don't want to say that's a threat. To me, it feels like it's a threat. Like, yo, if I don't get my shot, I'm going to retire. Like, I'm going to take my ball and go home type of shit if I don't get my way. Now, now you had a, a legit rematch clause in there. Then I understand that, hey, I have a rematch clause. I'm, in, I'm in implementing it, and I want me a rematch. Another problem with that. Now, what makes it – when I first heard the story by Neary Power for PED, I always had to ask this question, right? Now, why is that you pop after the fact, after you win the belt? Why didn't this this particular drug pop up doing prior the doing a pre fight? Yeah. You, you, you. We had when uh when you all of a sudden you see these fighters in these sports and combat sports getting popped after the fact. It's kind of like, yo, he got popped for what? It, so you mean to sit there and tell me this guy didn't pop? Didn't get? Did nothing show up in his test that he has some kind of PED in his system? Then the, the test he takes afterward happens to be the one that catches something. I'm Definitely starting to even want. I'm starting. Point. I'm starting to question the testing system in itself. Like, what are you particularly looking for? Now, y'all just said it was tainted meat. Okay, so this means this guy avoided all this tainted meat for this long period of time. The fight was in Japan, right? Yeah. So you mean to sit and tell me he somehow, some way, he ate some tainted meat? Listen, I'm gonna tainted meat, and now all of a sudden he probably. But let's be—I'm gonna say it for what it is. The food out here that's in is a lot of drugs, a lot of shit in this food. That I wouldn't be surprised anybody fell in the drug test. Definitely, it's a PD because they put steroids in these foods. So I—I I don't. I I get what both say, hey, don't eat the tainted meat. That's cool, but let's be honest. We don't know if a person say, I'm going to use it. I'm, not, I'm playing devil's advocate here. If he could have been over somebody's house and they cooked some food, hey, you want to eat? Hey, sure, no problem. You know what I'm saying? Ate it, and it could have it could have happened like that. Where this shit is happening? Because we seen fighters like Lamar P.C. get Papa P.D. He said, I didn't take no drugs. So apparently it must have been something you ate. That's showing up in the system as a PED. But I even got to give – if you if the WBC know that there are drugs, particular steroids that are put in foods, put in foods, and where technology is and testing is, if it ain't that much, I don't think a fighter should be held accountable for what it is because you can only control what – you can't control what you put in your body, and I understand that. But you cannot control what people put in food, the makers of these foods. So it could be organic as fuck, and it says on the thing, hey, I've been eating organic meat. But you never know. They could have slipped something in there or whatever like that. And, hey, it, it shows up. But I would like to wish we could know what the testing consists of, what type of testing. And how does it – is it a little amount? Is it a great amount? What is it you particularly look for? And what are the drugs that I put in – Steroids and drugs that I put in food that are, hey, strictly drugs, steroids, or whatever that I put in food that can have, that don't have a minimal effect on you being your performance, but, yo, we're looking at that. We can't hold you in, in violation of it. But be be mindful of it next time. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it definitely has a, they definitely need to have some kind of uh, limit or testing limit to where, you know, they could be like, okay, this we know this amount that is coming from. 
you know, just from specific diet as opposed to, you know, he's taking it as part of a, some kind of regimen. You know what I'm saying? So they definitely right. got to have some kind of clear you got, you got it for the drinks. Like with Bermain Devon, you, you made sure the drinks are uh, clear. So why can't you do the same with the uh, – with the uh, with the steroids, you yeah. know. All right. Well, I guess we'll uh, include on that note and let everybody give their uh, social media handles. Of course, uh, holding it down for our cats who can't be here. Um, 2K, big cool, colossal boxing talk. Um, 2K, the prodigy of boxing. Um, look forward to seeing y'all next week. Hopefully, um, I'm not sure their total handles. I know it's pretty much at Colossal Boxing Talk on everything for Big Cool. Um, I think TK's YouTube channel is just a prodigy of boxing, boxing talk, um, and he doesn't really fuck with uh, Twitter or nothing like that anyway. So, um, it was boxing that, guy uh, so on Twitter, but he'd be like, fuck Twitter. You can find me on the, on the um, YouTube community. That you can also see him... Uh, you know, he uh, has a special rendition coming out of his line of egg shapes. Um, you know what I'm saying? In retrospect, he's doing this in, uh, as a as a tribute to the late, great Dick Gregory. Rest in peace, brother. He's going to come out Rest with his own egg shaped Dick Gregory uh, recipe. <laughs> Find that nigga at your local Walmart looking, getting all the brown eggs. Ain't no brown get eggs. Some that, local... Get some of that egg shaped Dick Gregory. <laughs> I know that's fucking dis- That shit ain't got no taste at all, man My bad, man uh, Go ahead, Bo, where can they fire you at? Playing the video game Bro Yeah, hello, can y'all hear me now? Yeah, give your game a tag out <laughs> No <laughs> I wasn't playing the video game I was uh, upstairs in the kitchen uh, you can find me at Truth and Facts about boxing. Matter of fact, we might be doing the show in the next 10 minutes after we leave this one. Jump on in and get on the show. I don't know if my partner will be available to do a show. You know, his phone be all fucked up and shit. He got motherfuckers tossing his phone out windows and downstairs and in forests and shit. But uh, you can also you can find me on Instagram at Truth underscore Factbox1. Twitter, capital T for truth, underscore capital F, fact box one. Shout out to everybody out there, Garja Grill, pound for pound. Uh, you know, our boys who couldn't be here, 2K, you know, he's uh, he's down there. Uh, you know, man, you know, they, you know, bless his family. they down there with all that water, and 2K is down there at the chicken farm collecting all the eggs. You can't you can lose this product, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't lose this product, you know, big cool is, you know, Twinkie, you know, he ate a Twinkie and probably didn't pass out. So, shout out to them <laughs> brothers that, that couldn't be here, man. And, um, uh, mad shout out to, uh, 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 a good brother of ours who my partner Bernard has had to go ham on. You know, we're going to bring him back into boxing, y'all. We're we, we going to bring him back into boxing. He, you know he, you, you know he, he, he started out all right. Then he started becoming a little casual, but you know he's starting to turn into Jay Casuarone. But we gonna bring him back. You know what I'm saying? We gonna bring yeah, him out. Call, call him, of the call him Tay Casuarone. Tay Casuarone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna bring him out of the dark side, y'all. We promise. We gonna bring him out. We gonna bring him out of the dark side. <laughs> all right, uh, Bedard, uh, Trudeau, your handles, man. He definitely holds it down as far as uh our stuff on the movement. So big up Bernard on that. I'll let him give out the handles. Uh, you can find all of us in the movement Facebook group, the movement box, and that's D-A-M-U-V-M-E-N-T. Same on, on Instagram is D-A-M-U-V-M-E-N-T-B-P. On Twitter is the movement box. And so it's capital D, capital M, and capital B. And, you know, the the movement is not spelled with an O, it's spelled with a U. So you can find us can find me on in there as well as my partners in crimes in the in the Facebook group. You can find us in talking boxing and bullshit. We can live East Sleep Boxing, SSS Boxing Talk, Fisticuffs Boxing Talk, Colossal Boxing Talk, Danger Zone Boxing Talk. Shout out to them them brothers over there. Uh you can find us anywhere handing hand, hand out these anywhere. bills. Yeah, yeah, right. bills basically. <laughs> yeah you, you, you can find Bo and Ring IQ as usual spamming. 
Go on live. <laughs> this motherfucker go live like every ten minutes. Yo, I'm going. I'm going live in the, for the next fifteen minutes. Get prepared. So you can find him over there spamming. Like every look, it's one o'clock, and one every hour on the hour, he's he's he's, uh, he's dropping a video, man. So shoot, I don't think he even gets to go to sleep, man. Shoot. Uh, but yeah, you can find us there, man. You can find me on Tip the Facts about boxing. Yeah, I had some phone issues. Uh. But yeah, I'll probably uh, hop on the show, man. Uh, you can also, uh, hopefully, we get back into it. I want to uh, get back on a regular schedule, and then hopefully we could drop a round table. We could force oh, yeah, that. definitely. Uh, be yeah, for hope, definitely. Definitely to do that. Uh, I, I haven't done any skits lately. Um, I lost some due to the phone breaking. I got to get the other phone back. I got some information on there about a skit I'm trying to do. But don't get me wrong, it's also in the head as well. So I'm kind of like right now got some other personal things going on too as well. So I know people are like, yeah, what a skit said or whatever. This I'm throwing out the little detective beast though, just to hold y'all on. So again, hit the Instagram. What fighter you want me to look for? I'll make a I'll make a video or whatever about it real quick for y'all, man. It doesn't take that long. Uh, other Mr. than that, Post- man. I think I, I did Victor Postal. I think you did one on him already. I did Postal. Oh, okay. I did, I did Peter Quillen. And I did Jesse Vargas. Oh, shit. You, you got should, Jesse Vargas you already. Do, shit. Yeah, you should do a special retirement one for uh, Tim Timothy Sadly. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo ass was missing for two years anyway, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yo, I He's been released. He's been released. <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, but uh, well, yeah, uh, you. I wanted to. Uh, did you do a uh, big cool and um? You did two K. Yeah, right? I, yeah, I, yeah. I give. I gave out big cool and uh. You did uh two Ks. Well, you, you yeah, know where you're cool is all that colossal boxing talk. So his is pretty easy. Um, right, right, right. But uh, yeah, I'm trying to divine liberty. Um, a poopjab dot com. Also here the movement. Um, I'm kind of taking a hiatus from the groups right now just because I, they've been pissing me off. The only group I really fuck with right now is ours and and uh, Eastwick. Eastwick. You know, shout, shout out to Little Dominican. Kid. Yes. And Dominican, you know and Dominican talk. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. That nigga know, being Dominican yeah, talk, talking boxing, man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much bigger into my travel groups right now than the boxing, as far as uh, talking and talking to people. Um, I'm starting to see something Bo put out there. You know, um, it's not just with a group that he's a part of. You know, it's all of them, man. Pretty much three fourths casual, which is why I stick to fucking Eastwick in our group. We ain't got to deal with all that bullshit. Um, definitely want to get a shout out to our boy Chris Henderson, um, our Four Corners of Boxing Talk, for holding us down. Um, he also breaks a lot of news that you won't catch on mainstream shit. He breaks it like maybe weeks in advance. Boy, be on this shit. Um, like I said, underground media, we killing it right now. We we got to stay on top of ours. Um, with that said, we're going to catch y'all next week. Until then, uh, peace. All right.